One of the things that I love most about doing these brain health videos every week is interacting with the people who watch them. People like Gladys. She's 79 and she lives in Canada and she was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment four or five years ago. I will say this about Gladys. She is one feisty lady. I don't hear from her often, but usually what I do, it's to grouse about food. When she was first diagnosed with MCI, the doctor didn't say a word to her about diet. And that was fine with Gladys because it meant she could just go right on eating the way she always had. Unfortunately, the bad news did eventually reach her. If you've got MCI, you really kind of need to try to eat a little better. And that did not sit well with Gladys. In the first email I ever got from her, she wrote rather indignantly, who in the world came up with this crazy idea that people with MCI can't eat regular food? I am not amused. If I hear from her, usually, she's confessing what she sees as her latest dietary transgression. And I feel so bad for her because she feels like a failure, but she's not. My message to her would be, Gladys, stop fighting a battle you've already won. And my message to you is you can win that battle too. And today I want to talk about how. Hi, my name's Tony Deering of GoCogno.com, the website for people with mild cognitive impairment. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on nutrition, and Gladys immediately shot me an email. She said, you must have known I was behaving badly yesterday. I get so tired of not being able to eat the foods I enjoy. Most of the proper stuff is boring, so I treated myself to a big meal of just what I like. It felt great. So did Gladys do something naughty here? I don't think so. And to explain why, let me point you to the Blue Zones. You may have heard of the Blue Zones. They are these five rare places in the world where people live to a ripe old age and enjoy remarkable health. For them, things like heart disease, depression, Alzheimer's are all but unheard of. Partly, that's because their traditional diet is so brain healthy, but they don't eat that way all the time. On special occasions, holidays, birthdays, festivals, they throw that healthy diet out the window and feast on things that are bad for them. And then the next day, they go back to the way they usually eat. That's what allows them literally to have their cake and eat it too. They just don't eat it every day. And really, that's all it takes to win the battle of healthy eating. It's about finding ways to turn the naughty foods into an occasional treat and not an everyday habit. It works for them and it can work for you. Maybe you attended a Super Bowl party, and I can pretty much guarantee there were huge bowls of chips and Tostitos and Cheetos. So are you like, no, no, that's brain poison. I can't eat that. Or do you just have a handful and enjoy the game? You are allowed to do that. But again, here's what you cannot afford to do. Let's say you're still working, and every day at three o'clock, you get that mid-afternoon snack attack. So what do you do? You wander over to the vending machine, and you know there's nothing in there that's remotely good for you, but it's cheap, and it's convenient, and you're hungry, so you just buy it and eat it. And it becomes this daily ritual, and it is just so corrosive. To your cognition. So what do you do instead? What if you brought an apple with you? 
every day to work. That one small little change could make a huge difference for you. And that's all I want you to understand. The way to win that battle is to turn those foods from a daily threat to an occasional treat, the way Gladys did. You know, I, I was curious what this naughty meal she ate was, so I asked her to tell me. And I wrote it down here, so I want to make sure I get it right. So it was scrambled eggs, pork with panko breadcrumbs, shrimp, sweet potatoes, carrots, and ice cream bars. My only objection to that meal is that she didn't invite me. A lot of what's on that menu is actually okay for brain health. And even what's not is still allowed on an occasional basis, even in a brain healthy diet like the MIND diet. Which means even if you don't ban these foods from your diet, you can still defend your cognition in a really meaningful way. In fact, a study found that people who strictly follow the MIND diet reduce their risk of dementia by 53%, and even those who only followed it loosely reduce their risk by 35%. If you want to know more about the MIND diet and which foods you're allowed to eat and how often, read this article on Be Brain Fit. There's a link below. As for Gladys, you'll be glad to know that she is back on the straight and narrow. At the end of her email, she promised me, I'll try to eat better. Great piles of snow here. We're going skiing. Cheers. That sounds like a recipe for brain health to me. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, as always, be kind to your mind.